As the 27 EU countries meet in Brussels today to discuss Brexit, a former Irish Prime Minister says it could be a serious risk to the peace agreement in Northern Ireland. Bertie Ahern signed the Good Friday Agreement in 1998, ending 30 years of sectarian conflict. He joins us now from Dublin. Very good morning to you. Um, now, George Mitchell, who of course was involved in brokering the agreement, said that the fact that the UK was a member of the EU Ireland as a member of the EU was an important factor in the Good Friday Agreement. Once the UK is out, what happens? Well, I think the assumption was that the UK and Ireland would always be in the European Union. Um, so most of the references in the Good Friday Agreement are based on uh, membership of the European Union. But I, I don't think that's an essential part of it. Uh, we, we, if UK are out, we, we have to live with that. It just changes the dynamics, it changes the relationship. Um, I don't think it, it undermines the agreement. I think the important so, thing, Susanna, okay. now yeah. is that the integrity of, of the Good Friday Agreement will stand and hold. OK, I mean, a spokesman for the Conservatives said we remain absolutely committed to the principles of the agreement. Nothing about the EU exit undermines that. But something crucial does change, doesn't it? It will be, between Northern Ireland and Ireland, our only land frontier with the European Union here in the UK. That, that rather suggests there's going to have to be a border. And in order to prevent, for instance, illegal immigration, uh, smuggling of goods, avoidance of, of customs tax and all the rest of it, that border might have to be manned and secure. I mean, this all changes the nature of the border between the UK and Ireland, doesn't it? Significantly, does it raise tension? Um, it certainly does, and it, ra it raises all kinds of problems. I mean, we accept the fact that the UK are going to leave the European Union. Um, it's 11 months now since the vote, so you know, that's the way it is. But the two big issues for the Republic of Ireland, and I think for the island of Ireland, is the free movement of people. Um, there's huge trade every day. Uh, people work in the Republic, work in the North. Um, any kind of a border, a customs border, or a physical border to check people uh, would certainly create enormous difficulties. So th the whole emphasis of the Irish government and the Irish political system and Irish people for the last 11 months has been to try to secure a free movement of people and to try to find a way that we can deal with the customs issue in as non-intrusive as possible. Uh, that's not easy, movement, Susanna, if, but that's yeah. what we have to try but and if, achieve in these negotiations. If freedom of movement, if the concern Conservatives get back in and Theresa May has ruled out freedom of movement, why would that why would she allow freedom of movement between Ireland and Northern Ireland? And how much of a I mean I just can't imagine the sort of difficulty there's going to be. How is that border going to be secure and manned? I mean it just it it what are you saying to politicians, or what are politicians in Ireland saying to the UK? about how that border needs to be staffed so that it doesn't cause antagonism. Yeah, well, I think in fairness to Theresa May, on the free movement of people, the answer to that is that we've had an agreement uh, with the UK government since 1922 or 1923. So that, far, that predates the, the European Union in, in 1973. So uh, all as we want to do is keep status quo. And I think the British government accept that. It's a different question for goods. Uh, the movement of goods requires, because it's the border with the UK uh, and the European Union, um, that's not as easy. Uh, there's no arrangements for that. Th that's going to be an essential uh, part of the negotiations, how we can find a way not to have a physical border. You are correct, Susanna. If it's a physical border with customs checks, um, that is potentially uh, opening up conflict and division and problems again. We don't want that, and I think the whole core of our negotiations, uh, and I think everybody agrees with this in Republic of Ireland, is to find a way of not having a physical border, whether it's electronics, technology or whatever we do, but we have to try and find some way of avoiding that.